Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And we're your two favourite Brits covering IndyCar. And it's been a while, but we're going to have a newsy sort of podcast Ooh. because obviously we covered some news in our discussion debates videos with obviously uh, the Detroit uh, you know, whether a race moving back to downtown in Detroit is a good idea. So check that video out. We'll put that up there somewhere. And also our Colton Herter. Was it a good or bad thing that Andretti didn't find its way in Formula One for the 2022 season? Uh, we had actually official confirmation, I think, from that. And Michael was, you know, it was serious. It wasn't a lack of funding uh, going in on that issue for obviously this is probably a bit of building on that video. Um, but yeah, it wasn't the funding. It was that they weren't going to give Michael Andretti complete control of the team or at least to the standard that he wanted. And if you're asking for 650 million or whatever the rumored price was, you're probably not going to get exact figures because the negotiation deals, you wouldn't put exact figures out on the table yeah. until it's completed. Then it might be public records. But yeah, the rumored cost. You're going to want a bit of control. Yeah. Although he's still pursuing it, isn't he? Yeah. He said he's not giving up on getting um, a seat in F1, basically, for Colton. Yeah, I think it's been a, yeah, a long-term dream. And I think it's because Colton wants to ride in it. But he also said it would have been his choice uh, to move to F1. But we know, and it came up in that interview again, he does have a desire that by the time his career, he loves IndyCar. IndyCar is his big love. That's what he was watching before Formula One. But he does have a desire to have raced a lot of cool racing cars once he's done. And one of the, well, the best technological open wheel racing car out there is a Formula One car. So you're going to want to have the, if you get an opportunity, you're going to want to drive that. Yeah. I just realized this story actually links into one of the news stories we're going to be talking about. But that's later in the video. Well, yes. Yes, it does. Because there is a big news story. And you've probably seen it from the thumbnail. So we're going to come on to that then. But we're going to start off with Andretti Autosport, technically. And uh, we haven't mentioned it on a kind of video since there. So Devlin DiFrancesco, uh, the deal was put in place, I think, two years ago through his Indie Lights campaign. Um, with Andretti Autosport and he was a, another bad kept secret. Andretti aren't very good at keeping those secrets no. about when they're doing things, but the Hinchcliffe has been replaced in the number 29 car with Devlin De Francesco, another Canadian driver. Uh, Hinch was pretty classy about it, I, I think, on social media saying that, you know, good for Devlin for now. And, uh, I think all the rumours were the Indy car suits Devlin a lot more than the Indy Lights car. Um, they believed in him. They backed his faith. Uh, well, they backed faith in Devlin that he can be a successful driver for them within the Indy car series. And, you know, it's a top seat still, the Andretti Autosport. And I don't think it would have just been, uh, I think some unfairly, some people are going, it's a money move for Devlin. Because I think financially he is well backed, and you know I think he was sixth in the Indy Light standings this season. Not setting the world alight necessarily, but there's something there in Devlin, and obviously he drove over in here in Europe and Asia series. There's something that Michael and the whole Andretti White Sport team seen him. But your feelings on the number twenty nine, Stephen? Well, like you said, he didn't have a blister in Indy Lights uh, season last year, but. That doesn't necessarily uh, correlate with how they can perform in IndyCar. Uh, exciting to see another face on the grid. Um, you know, we may be losing Hinchcliffe, but, you know, counterbalance with another Canadian. We keep our There's Canadian still, quota. Still balance in the force. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. It'll be interesting because obviously we know the top guys at Andretti are Colton and Rossi. So I'd say pressure's not really on him. Mm. Uh, it's kind of, he's got an incredible opportunity to show what he's got in a top team, in the in a top series. Um, yeah, he's got to perform. I think the main thing is, though, he does got have to perform, but he does have pressure off. Yeah. Because let's be honest, the media focus will be on the top three in the team. Colton, Grosjean... <laughs> and um, 
Alexander Rossi. I forgot about Grosjean. You see? <laughs> that was a disrespect. I wasn't afraid to No say. disrespect. Shame. Colton Hurt and Rossi, they the main two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Of course, yeah, Grosjean. Oh, yeah. there you are. Ah, he's just a past it Frenchman, isn't he? <laughs> Oh yeah. dear, he had a couple yeah. of good performances last year. He's nothing special. <laughs> the limelight is off him. Exactly. And from interviews I've seen of Devlin, he comes across as a really great guy, another great personality, which the IndyCar paddock is full of. Uh, guys who are so welcoming and uh, just really get that kind of fan and driver interaction and, you know, just family feel of the sport I think Devlin fits the mould perfectly and let's hope that yeah he can perform out the racetrack and go from there what would be a uh, we'll probably do more videos on it but what would classify as a successful rookie season for Devlin for uh, sport considering where they've been the last couple of years I would say at least in the top 15 in the championship mm -hmm. um, probably <laughs> Well, I say it's, it'd be harsh to expect podiums, but then you saw Scott did that last year. He's got to have a few strong top tens and be at least top 15 in the standings. I'd say six of the season. I think a couple of kind of finding your feet races, but regular top tens yeah. of probably what have got to be expected. Uh, you know, a Penske car is taken out of the mix now with obviously Simon Pagano leaving in that seat. The grid is so competitive. It's so difficult, isn't it? The traditional three yeah. teams. Andretti, Ganassi, Penske, and then, sorry, Penske have three guys there. Andretti have four full-time guys there. And also Ganassi have four full-time guys there. With the Jimmy one obviously being an outside bet, but he was improving towards the end of the season. There is every chance he could be competing for top 10s next season if it really kind of the penny drops yeah. type of thing. So they're your main ones. Then you add in the Aaron McLaren SPs, the Meyer you Shanks, the Raymond and Melanigans. The top 10 with title contenders. Yes. Yes, you could. Like You could probably go <laughs> even a little bit more than 10 of people that can actually challenge for the title. Not people that can have you know, good season, may get top five. These are people that can actually win the title. Yeah, I, I think sitting back from that, Devlin to get a top 15. Even, I, I even expect then, it. You've got to expect it. <laughs> but it seems really tough. It There's is, a lot yeah. of competitive guys. So there isn't going to be much time to find his feet in that machinery because the competition is just so deep. It's so kind of... Yeah. Uh, it's so competitive throughout the field from there. But yeah, Devlin is going to be interesting to see, but he's official confirmed for the 29. Now, something that's unofficial in our official sandwich. Uh, you know, we had an official bit of news there with DeFrancesco. There's an official bit of news to kind of round off. And then in the middle, we've got this unofficial, but kind of highly hinted at, uh, Carlin Hunko's Hollinger merger. Now, obviously, I don't know if that is a combination of three cars will be run between them and Carlin will have the Max Chilton plus a Connor Daly or some sort running ovals alongside uh, supporting Hollinger for a joint second entry. So Hunko's Hollinger doing that alongside Callum Eilat. Or whether that means Carlin as a team have said, you know what, uh, it's not really gone our way. IndyCar's not the way we're going to push. We're just going to give sell all our machinery and stuff to Hunkos who are quite keen on running two cars because they want a second driver, uh, a more experienced guy to kind of help and uh, assist Callum Eilat through the process through there. Whether it's just that and whether that is Max Chilton who then kind of covers... Don't say it! There. Don't say it! Where the hometown boy is out of there! No! Oh, I'm sorry. I have to say. No, you know what? I'll leave the channel. Okay. I don't think I'll continue with IndyCar. <laughs> if Max leaves, I'll support, I go with it. I'll support a real series, and that real series will be whatever Max Chilton Drake's in. <laughs> and that will be the third iteration of Fanatics YouTube <laughs> channel, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I look. 
it's an interesting one. Matteo Nanini, who's obviously been yep. the F3 and ran a few F2 ladders, tried to do the F3 and F2 simultaneously this year, but couldn't on funding-wise uh, basis there. He's coming across and running Indy Lights with Hunkos Hollinger with this combined uh, car. And he was in the factory. He's given some pictures, actually, on yeah. Twitter. Well, a picture of what may be Callum Eilat's car or the machinery sold to Hunkos from Carlin. But that is an interesting one to see how that develops and who will fill that seat. Do they do simple? But I imagine Hunkos would want a full-time guy. Yeah. If they're going to get an experienced guy, they're probably going to want a full-time yeah, guy. Yeah, I think it needs seat. to be experienced in the series. And Max doesn't want to do it anymore. He doesn't want to run ovals outside the Indy 500. Yeah. He pulled out that with Carlin, which opened the opportunity uh, for Connor Daly in that sort of partnership. So, then interesting names throw about. I don't know if the Ryan Hunter Ray looks heavily linked there. Maybe it is a Connor Daly, Connor Daly. full time. Yeah. If he loses that carpenter ride. Yeah. So, there's going to be plenty of the silly season has been very silly so far, but can it get sillier? Yeah, probably. That's the drama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what sure. we want. Plenty of seats to be yet announced and uh, interesting to go from there. And I suppose Indy 500 entries will be arrived oh, as well, which we won't good. see because NASCAR champion Carl Larson, that heat won't go away. All season, there'll be some few superstars. The Aaron McCarthy. I saw he made like a comment of like he was getting tired about asking about the Indy 500. Yeah, I think he's basically like, I want to do it, but it's out of my. We kind of we're 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 outside the NASCAR bubble. Uh, We only get clip it, but like Jesus, he just constantly getting bombarded with. You get a race the Indy 500. You get a race the Indy 500. He's like, guys, look, I know I'm good, but I just race the car. Other people do that sort of thing. I just get in a car if they give it to me and I win (laughs) Uh, on that basis. So that rounds up that bit of news. So third bit of news, Stephen. Carl Kirkwood is in the number 14 at AJ5 Racing. 14. I I don't know where that's going. (laughs) What was that? <laughs> I was trying to get the excitement by higher pitch, but it, it just work. got more squelched and drained. <laughs> yeah. ah, squeezed. Yeah. Cal Kirkwood, All-American Indy Lights champion, uh, gets the AJ Foyt racing seat uh, full time. And a small team, you've got to start somewhere. Well, that was where your link from the Andretti F1 failed move comes in, isn't it? Yes. Did did Michael officially say it or was it just uh, speculated or rumoured that the seat Colton Herter, if Colton Herter went to F1, Cole Kirkwood was replacing him. Yeah, in the 26. Uh, in the 26. I believe that was pretty much official. Yes. Um because obviously he, wait, well, raced for Andretti in Indy Lights, didn't he? Yep, correct. Obviously, you get the Andretti's uh, scholarship, isn't that the thing from Indy Lights? Um, but then, because Colton heard to didn't go, uh, there was no seat for him. And Devlin De Francesco, which obviously a lot of people were like, oh, why didn't Carl get the 29 over Devlin? And Devlin obviously finished lower in Indy Lights because that was already agreed that he would progress to Indy car from Indy Lights with Andretti before that season. So Hinch, I suppose, was always very much just um shop window yeah. type of thing. And it looks like he will confirm, I think, a full-time ride within Inza as well, Hinchcliffe. So he continues his uh racing. But yes, kept his racing career going on that aspect. Um But yeah, that is why Kyle isn't in that 29 seat and Devlin is. But Andretti had a kind of clause in the contract that expired last Sunday, which made Carl Kirkwood a free agent. I was surprised maybe a Penske didn't take a punt, but he very rarely goes for rookies. And obviously, Scott McLaughlin is a IndyCar rookie, but in terms of his talent... He was a champion. Yeah, he was a three-time champion in uh, Aussie Supercars. So, And he was 27th. 
So he'd done quite a bit of racing before that. Yeah. Carl has blitzed. He's won five consecutive championships. I think he won USF4, then the USF2000, then the in the Pro 2000, I believe, before USF3, and then obviously won the Indy Lights Championship from there. He's just gone win, win, win. And he's a guy like Oliver Askew who came through, not with a huge amount of budget. He's just basically relied on winning each category yeah. enables him to get the funding to progress in the next, which is the fantastic part of the ladder that the winner has the funding to compete in it yeah. from there exactly. and, and compete in a full-time ride. So that gives a clear pathway. If you are talented enough to win these things, you're going to keep going because exactly. we're going to keep giving you the funding yeah. to make sure you get all the way. And it, I think it was so important to give Cole the full-time seat. Mm. I was surprised you said Penske not giving a... Uh, you thought Penske may have given a punt. I was thinking maybe a McLaren. With Zach Brown wanting to get uh, another American back in uh, his American IndyCar team. Now, Aaron McLaren SP are an interesting one because... The third car seems to be superstar car, yes. which is Fernando Alonso at the Indy 500, Juan Pablo Montoya at the Indy 500. So it kind of feels like a big name. Nico Hulkenberg tested. Personal reasons has chosen not to. I suppose that's news as well yep. that we've gone, has decided not to go there. Stoffel van Dorn is rumoured, uh, I think, is going to be testing later on. Uh, in the winter with Aaron McLaren SP. I don't know if that was in future of there, but I very much, I think I speculated this on Twitter and it would make sense of Aaron McLaren SP doing a similar sort of thing to Rahul Letman Lanigan doing in the second half of the 2021 season where they rotated the three guys of Ferrucci, Lundgaard and Askew. And then on those showings, and probably politics within that of who wanted which driver in the ownership kind of triangle, however that plays out, which led to Christian Lungard being announced in the number 30 yeah. car. Um, I imagine that's what Aaron McLaren SP were doing with obviously those guys testing the Hulkenbergs, the Van Dorns. Carl Kirkwood is a superstar, but they already have the young protege in Pato. Yeah. Felix Rosenvist technically is a prodigy of type. He was very highly rated coming into Ganassi as a rookie in 2019. Yeah. Didn't quite work out in 2020. Had a struggling 2021 season, but obviously was showing signs of improvement and progress going into 2022 at the back end of last year. I don't think they wanted a third inexperienced guy, although obviously Pato and Felix are quite experienced now. I don't think they wanted to go, another young gun. Yeah. Probably. I think they wanted big name of attracting from another series. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll offer something would, to Carl Larson. I would have loved <laughs> to see a Pato Kirkwood partnership. Not not to just Felix, but <laughs> I'd love to see a Pato Felix Kirkwood partnership. I mean, that would have been an awesome team. Yeah, it would have been like Aaron McLaren SP would have had some serious talent. But like you said, I think I think they're looking for. Superstar name and obviously a bit more financial backing. And I think to com yeah, confirm that, there was an interview, I think I saw David Land share it on Twitter with Jimmy Johnson, I think he was doing an in-depth one where like a talk show host or whatever in America. And he was saying that Zach Brown gave him an F1 test and his initial goal was to try and get to F1 before he came over to IndyCar after NASCAR. Um, but obviously, with the super license points and everything like that, getting into F1 would have become very difficult. Who? Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, okay, yeah. Did I not say Jimmy? You probably did. I just missed it. <laughs> okay. So that was Jimmy Johnson. But Arrow McLaren SP was his first test in IndyCar. So again, linking into they are looking for high profile people yes. to fill that third car. And so therefore, Kirkwood doesn't fit that bracket. True. I don't know who fits that bracket. I, if Daniel Ricciardo decides to give up F1, I suppose, and come over to IndyCar, I guess, that would yeah. be the dream and Pato goes the other way. Um, but then obviously that still leaves <laughs> yeah. a vacant seat. But maybe 
if they did that, they'd be more inclined to get a American talent in yeah. from an indie lights because they would have got the superstar in Daniel Ricardo coming across and competing on that front. Yeah. But anyway, Kirkwood at AJ Foyt. I feel like we've t- talking about everything other than AJ Foyt racing in this whole situation. Uh, because you can't get away from the fact that they are a team still developing. And like we had that uh, great interview with Dalton. You know, they're still building and they're still uh, working out how to maximise the qualifying performance, the race pace they feel is there, just maximising the qualifying performance. Um, it's going to be a development season for Kirkwood. Yeah. And coming in, it, it, it's tough. Now they lose Seb uh, in a partnership. Dalton obviously is improving. Cole Kirkwood coming in as a rookie, improving those qualifying times. You, you probably were looking at someone like experienced, like we talked about. Well, Jack Harvey's Ray Hill Letman Lanigan move. Jack Harvey's a very good qualifier. They were struggling a bit on qualifying setups. Jack could be what helps them improve and develop there. Cole Kirkwood isn't necessarily that, but he's such a good talent that AJ Foyt getting him is huge. And he could definitely get some big performances. Yeah. Because this guy is, yeah, one of the top, top talents from the Coltons, the Patos coming out of it, VKs, Askews. He's another one along that mould. Easy. And arguably his track record through the kind of junior categories is even better than any of those guys because he may not have gone for a European stint, but he smashed the US feeder ladder out the park. He's absolutely smashed it. And this is a huge, huge coup, I think, for AJ Foyt Racing to secure Kirkwood. Yes, I have nothing else to add. There we go. Well, we want to hear your thoughts on uh, that those pieces of news. Your thoughts on the Devlin De Francesco move. Uh, your thoughts on the uh, Carlin Junkos. Is it a merger of kind of three slash two cars? Do you think Carlin are finally bidding farewell to IndyCar? What's it been about four or five years? I think something like that. It's okay. Hometown boy. We won't believe it until it's official. I won't believe it even if it is official. <laughs> Fair enough. And then Carl Kirkwood. Uh, it is, I think, the big positive here. Great driver for AJ Foyt Racing. And also, it is great that the Indy Lights champion, it's great for the in a Rota Indy ladder that the Indy Lights champion, especially a champion as good as Carl Kirkwood, has secured a full-time seat. Because a part-time seat and running in Formula E, which was rumoured with Andretti, wouldn't have done Kirkwood justice no. and wouldn't be good because it'd be like, well, great, we've just fed Carl Kirkwood to another series to become yeah, a great name. Exactly. We yeah. need him to be kind of like a standout in our series, IndyCar, and that's great. Um, so, yeah, I think that wraps it about enough for the video. I think that's probably about enough time. We'll, we'll leave it there for today's video. Look out for, if you've enjoyed the driver interviews, we are working hard. We have three, four more drivers in the pipeline scattered between now and January. There you go from there. And we are hard working on kind of more guys from the grid as well. So, yeah, fingers crossed that we can keep uh, getting those kind of driver interviews. And again, Sorry, timing-wise, it's just flat out at the moment, but hopefully you're enjoying them. The debate series will be back on there, and I think we are going to go with, uh, well, we'll make it official now. Does IndyCar need a new chassis? I know uh, champcar.web, uh, I think, is the Twitter handle. Um, large following on there, discussed it, I think, month month and a half ago on Twitter and got quite a lot of discussion there, and we thought it was... Uh, kind of quite a good debate to go and visit for our Friday video. So we'll see you there. We hope you enjoyed this one. And then they are new around here, Stephen. What can they do? They can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. Don't forget to leave your comments below. We want to hear your thoughts. But for now, you indie fans, keep racing.